Hi, this is Martin Brennan from Imagineer Systems, and today we're going to be looking at how you can use Mocha's Planar Camera Solver to get a camera for footage that can be difficult to track with a conventional 3D tracker. So right now in the industry there are quite a few different 3D trackers, each of them employing sophisticated techniques using feature tracking to define points relative to one another. Now each one of these has their strength and they can solve a large amount of match moving problems. However, there are cases where there's either too much shifting data or not enough identifiable data in the case of low texture, depth of field and motion blur. And this is where feature based trackers can struggle to define a camera motion. These kind of shots can be solved by Mocha, however, in the same way we solve hard 2D tracks. We use a combination of our planar tracking and the camera solver in Mocha version 3. Let's take a look at an example of a difficult camera solve and how it can be fixed using Mocha. So inside Mocha, here we have a normal forest pan shot. Normally this would be considered an easy feature solve as there are so many points for a feature tracker to lock onto. However, because of these lighting changes up here and there is motion blur through the middle of the shot as the camera pans down, a feature camera tracker is having a hard time locking onto this type of shot. Now, this is not to say that a feature-based camera tracker isn't a good tracker, it's simply limited to the features it's able to track, and sometimes there just aren't any. If we use this shot inside Mocha, however, we can planar track multiple areas in the shot, and that has no problem with features becoming blurry, because we're looking at the bigger picture of the planes you are tracking, and not individual points. So the first thing we need to do in this shot is actually identify some planes that we can use. Now, being a forest shot, it's all very organic, so it's actually hard to find decent planes within this type of shot. Obviously, we've got the ground, but we only see some of that for a portion of the time. So I'm going to actually start tracking that area first, and then we'll show you the different areas we can use after. So I'm just going to draw a plane down the bottom here, and I'm going to try and get as much of this area here as possible. I'm not going to track too far forwards, because you can see here, this grass down here, although it is planar, and I'll just shift the timeline across, you can see that it's got a slight amount of parallax. Now the planar tracker will lock onto this, but there isn't really enough information for me here. If I just switch just a few frames up into the shot, you can see even just 30 frames in, it's actually completely obscured, so it's not really enough information. So I'm just going to track the plane of the back, and we can still use this and treat it as a whole planar area. So first of all, now that we've got this shape in the background here, I'm going to set it to perspective, and we'll just call it ground, like that, and then I'm going to start tracking backwards. So this will capture all of the ground information at the back. And once we get to about here, I'm going to stop it. And we're going to zoom in here a little bit and just set up a surface so we can see how that is looking in the shot. So I'm going to set up my surface and I'm just going to set the possible estimated projection of this area here. And we'll take a look at the grid and see how that's tracked. So you can see that's tracked reasonably well. Even when we get down to here, it's actually holding on pretty good. Let's just move out a little bit. So that's not bad. Now we want to be sure that this is tracked well, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here so we can see our surface, and I'm going to turn on the stabilize button up here to preview and lock down this surface area. So if I now move my playhead, we can see how this is locking down for that surface. And we can see how well that surface is actually locking down. There's no point shifting, there's no sort of drift or anything like that that's going to cause a problem for our track. So I can turn that stabilize off now, and I'm going to zoom out. And I'll just turn off the grid. Now, in order for our uh, camera solver to actually solve the camera correctly, we're going to need at least two planes uh, for this scene. Because we're not using a pan tilt zoom shot, which will actually just work out the plane of the camera, we need to define the scene more so that we can work out how the camera is moving through the shot as well. So we need to find something that's going to overlap this in time enough that we can get a decent solve. So if we just scrub through the shot here, we can have a look at a few planes. We've got one plane up here which is nice and solid, which we can use, but that's going to disappear right out of the shot before we get to the end of this one. We've also got some nice easy data over here in this dark trunks. 
And that actually is a, probably a pretty good place to start because it actually holds on through for the entire shot and there's no overlapping branches in the way. So I'm just going to come back up to there and I'm going to draw another shape for this side branch here. So I'm just going to draw right down to here and just get this whole area around here. Now our surfaces automatically come up because we've got it on and I'm also going to turn on the grid to see how that goes. Now even though there isn't much perspective over in this area, I'm going to turn on perspective anyway just to make sure that I catch any weird shift that may happen as the camera pans down. So we're going to do the same again, I'm going to start tracking, but first of all let's name our area. So I'm just going to call this area the right trees. And I'm going to turn off the tracking cog for the ground so I don't track that again. So I'm starting from the very beginning of the shot this time and we're going to start tracking downwards. So let's start tracking that now. So rather than bore you with a 130 frame track, I've just stopped and waited for that track to finish. So we can see how that track is looking now. If I just play forwards, we can see that that track is following on quite smoothly. We can see how it's starting to tilt a little bit as the camera is panning down. So that's holding on really nicely. We get a bit of camera shake here and it's holding on really nicely. So that's actually a nice solve that goes the way through the entire frame rate, which means that it's going to actually overlap our nice area here. So that's a really nice area to lock onto for this plane. Because we only have a little bit of background data up to here, however, I also want to track one more area to make sure that it overlaps with this one. So we talked about this area before, so I'm going to track this area back here as well. So I'm going to turn off the cog for my right trees, and I'm going to grab this whole area right here. Now even though there's a massive bloom thing happening here, this will actually lock on quite well because we've got a nice bit of texture detail here and it's far enough away that it's not going to cause any problems with our track. So I'm going to turn on perspective again and we're going to call these back trees and we can start tracking. Okay, so we've finished that track now. Uh, you can see here I've actually shrunk down the mat a little bit smaller than I originally planned because some background of this uh, tree area was actually interfering. So we've just made the shape a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to turn off that mat again and we'll just have a look in here. I'm going to zoom in a bit further again and we're going to use that stabilize uh, preview up here so we can see how that locked on. So if we drag through the shot here, we can actually see that's holding on quite well. If we look, for example, at this grid point here, that's actually holding on really, really nicely to that area. And we can see it starts to get a little bit wonky towards the end here as we start to lose the shape. So that's quite decent. So we're going to actually probably stop it about... Let's just make sure that's all looking okay. Still good there. So we'll stop it about there. So I'm going to go to my layer property and actually discard the rest of that tracking because we'll have enough information over the other side to help finish up this camera solve. So I'm going to turn off the cog for these back trees as well just so that they're all safe and now we can go over and start doing our camera solve. So we now have our three areas that we want to track. We've got our back trees here that are actually doing most of the timeline. We've got the side trees which are actually covering the entire timeline. And we've got the floor, which only covers a little bit, but will be nice to give us a nice ground base for something that we want to insert into our shot. So if we just turn on all the mats for those so we can see those, and I'll just scrub through the timeline so you can see all those in principle. So we can see how they're all flowing through and getting an idea of the scene for our solve. So once we have all this information, we can now just go and select our back trees and then hold down shift and select our ground to select all of the layers within the shot. And now we can go over to camera solve to finish up. Now normally what you would do is just click auto and you can also choose uh, small parallax or large parallax for this particular example, but I'm going to leave it at auto so I can let Mocha give me the best guess for this snap shot. Now this is going to take longer because the auto has to try out a few ideas and see if it's working for it, but it'll often give us the most accurate uh, example of what should be solved within the shot. So I'm just going to click Solve, and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so we've come back and the Solve is finished. 
Uh, we've got a solve quality of 96% for these three layers, which is a really excellent solve. If you start to get below 80% in your solve quality, you might want to check that your layers have been tracked well enough, because sometimes if there's drift in your layers, or you haven't quite chosen a proper planar area to track, then the solve quality will probably reduce quite significantly. So it's good to check to make sure that you've got enough information within your shot to get a good solve. So once we've got this solve quality, we can click on our Export Camera Data button, and we can choose to export out to whatever application we need. Now in Mocha for After Effects, we only have the After Effects 3D motion data available, but if you have Mocha Pro, you can also choose to export out to FBX, which you can bring into Cinema 4D, Maya, Flame, Smoke, Fusion, etc., or FBX data for Nuke. Here I'm going to use After Effects 3D motion data, and I'm just going to copy that to the clipboard and switch over to After Effects. Okay, so here we are inside After Effects. In order for us to paste our Mocha camera data, we need to have downloaded the Mocha 3D Track Importer for AE that's available on the Imagineer Systems website. This will create a Paste Mocha Camera item inside the Edit menu. You just need to install the plugin to your plugins directory inside After Effects. So we can just select this Paste Mocha Camera to paste our data, and that will paste in the Mocha Nulls as well as the Mocha Camera. Now we have five nulls for every layer that we tracked inside Mocha. So if we select all of our nulls here, we can see how they are represented in the shot. So we can see the five nulls here for the back area that we tracked, the five nulls for the side, and if we scroll through the timeline, we'll come down to the five nulls for the ground. So now inside After Effects, we can use these points to help position some text or a 3D object inside our shot. In this case, I'm going to put some 3D titles that rest on the ground where our nulls are over here. So while we're on the ground plane here, I'm just going to come up to the text tool and click on my text and I'm just going to type in a simple phrase. Let's say a walk in the forest. Fairly generic, but you get the idea. So let's just put a center on that. And we're going to make this text uh, 3D object. So we just click on our 3D object icon here, and boom, it disappears because it's gone somewhere where the camera can't see it. So to fix that, we want to actually position it in the shot. To do this, I'm going to choose one of the nulls and get its position information. So I'm going to find my center point for this ground plane, which is null 4 by the looks of it, and I'm going to press P to pull up the position information. I'm also going to select my text layer and press P for that to get its position information. So you can see our null is actually quite a far way back compared to the text here. So I'm just going to copy this information to the text layer. So I'm going to copy the X and paste it to the text X. I'm going to copy the null Y and copy it to the text Y. And I'm going to copy the null Z and paste it to the text Z. Now you can see it's quite small here, so I'm going to set up the scale. We'll scale it up quite big, like that. And then we'll use that position data to push it up within our shot here. So let's pull it up like that. Now this green color is sort of ruining our uh, blend here, so I'm going to choose a different color. Let's choose the color of this tree trunk over here and that stands out a little bit better. We can also see this is angled back a little bit, so I'm just going to press R on my text to get, bring up the rotation, and we're just going to work out the X rotation a little bit so that it's standing forwards a little bit further. And now, when we scrub through, we should be able to see that locking on quite nicely. I'm also going to push this up a little bit further so that we can start to see it through the rest of the shot. So we'll just scrub back a little bit, about there. So now that's going directly up from that null that we had before. And just so we don't interfere with this tree, let's just move it over a little bit. We could go ahead and mask out this tree if we wanted to, but let's just keep it simple. And there we have our final bit of text floating in the shot. So here's the final result. I've added a few lights to add a bit of volumetrics in here, just using the Trapcode Lux plugin and a spotlight. And we've also just pushed it up a little bit further and changed the colouring just to match the scene a little bit better. 
So let's say you use Mocha version 3 to track and then solve a camera for a difficult shot. We've defined three separate areas to just define the scene of the shot, and then we've calculated the data and brought it straight into After Effects to use a camera and the nulls to set up the rest of the scene. So using Mocha's planner tracking, we can solve 2D and 3D problems that can be difficult with other tracking methods. This gives you the flexibility to solve cameras for After Effects in Mocha AE and Mocha Pro, and also other 3D supported applications such as Nuke, Smoke, Cinema 4D and Maya with the FBX format in Mocha Pro. If you would like to learn more about the Camera Solver, you can check out our videos on the Imagineer Systems website, or ask questions at our forum at forum.imagineersystems.com. This has been Martin Brennan for Imagineer Systems.